The next thing we're going to look at is the chemical shift, or where exactly on the NMR spectrum between 0 and 13 parts per million does a particular proton show up. And we've already looked at this compound and saw that the carboxylic acid proton is really far downfield, while this alkyne proton is pretty far upfield. So we're going to look at some of the factors that influence the chemical shifts of particular protons. The first thing we're going to see is that any decrease in electron density around the nucleus is going to deshield that nucleus and move it further downfield. So always keep in mind, deshield, downfield, higher chemical shift. And what we're looking at here in this effect is by having some electronegative atom bonded to a carbon with protons, that electronegative atom is withdrawing electron density, giving that carbon a partial positive charge, the electronegative atom a partial negative charge. So that's why we have a decrease in electron density around this carbon, decrease in electron density around those protons. So looking at this series and going from methane all the way to fluoromethane, we're increasing in our chemical shift. So just to give you some values, the four protons in methane, there's no electronegative atom there. They're extremely far upfield, probably around 0 0.23 parts per million. Now, of the halogens, the iodide is the least electronegative, but it still has a pretty strong effect. So now these protons are going to show up at 2.2. So just by adding that electronegative atom, we've deshielded those protons substantially. Now moving to the more electronegative bromine, we're going to be at about 2.7. Chlorine, about 3.1. And then the most electronegative atom, fluorine, it's going to have the strongest electron withdrawing effect. That means uh, these protons have the least density around them, and this shows up at about 4.3. So you can see a pretty large effect in going from right to left. Next, we're going to see that as we add more of those electronegative groups, we sort of have an additive effect on the chemical shift. So starting down here at the right, again we have methane, which we already said, 0.23 parts per million. And then we already looked at chloromethane, which is around 3.1. But now we're going to see an even stronger effect by having two electronegative chlorine groups. Two chlorines, it's going to withdraw twice the amount of electron density from the carbon. So now we're going to see the chemical shift of that proton. And it's going to be right around 5.3 parts per million. So quite a bit higher than one chlorine. And then once you get to three chlorines, this proton is at 7.26. So a large effect as we increase the number of these electron withdrawing groups or electronegative atoms. Now how does this electronegative atom affect a chain? What we're going to see is that this effect diminishes rapidly with distance. So here we have our electronegative fluorine, and it's directly bonded to this carbon. So these protons feel a really strong effect from that fluorine. They're going to be at 4.3 parts per million. But now as we move one more carbon over, we have a further distance away from that fluorine. 
So there's not nearly uh, a substantial electron withdrawing effect like there was with the first carbon. So now this is down to about 1.7 parts per million. And then one more carbon atom out, the CH3, those protons, they're going to have hardly any effect from that chlorine. They're going to be at about one parts per million. Now in addition to halogens or oxygen as an electron withdrawing atom, we can think about electron withdrawing groups. So let's compare propane and methyl acetate, where we have this ester group. So just for comparison purposes, in propane, the methyl protons, and remember these two are equivalent, they're going to be at about 0 0.9 parts per million. The CH2 protons, 1.3. And we'll see a little later on that this carbon that is di-substituted has a slightly higher chemical shift than a mono-substituted carbon. But now let's compare this methyl group with the methyl group, or both methyl groups in methyl acetate. So the first one here on the left, we have an electronegative atom attached. And that is pulling electron density away from that carbon, deshielding these protons. So we see a pretty large effect. They're going to be at 3.7 parts per million. And that's due to that electronegative oxygen. But now this carbonyl group is also an electron withdrawing group. Now it's not as strong as the atom but this group as a whole is still pulling electron density away from that carbon. So these protons, they're going to be at about 2.2. So they are downfield relative to just a standard CH3 and an alkane, but not as much as an actual electronegative atom like oxygen. So you can see the difference here. Now, as we just saw, increasing the number of alkyl groups actually deshields a proton. And it might seem a little counterintuitive in that we often consider these alkyl groups as sort of donating, but um, there's other effects sort of involved here. But we'll just look at the basic trend. If we have methane, we've seen this a number of times already, those protons. 0.23 parts per million. Now we have a primary carbon where we have three hydrogen and a methyl group. These hydrogens, they're going to be right around 0 0.9 parts per million. And although I know it's drawn a little funny here, but all three of these are equivalent. Okay, now we can move to a secondary carbon where we have two alkyl groups attached. Now these two protons, they're both on that carbon, they're both equivalent. They're going to have a slightly higher chemical shift and they're going to be around 1.3. And then finally a tertiary carbon where we have three alkyl groups. This proton is going to be around 1.7. So there's no need to memorize these exact numbers, but just be aware of these trends to help you predict the chemical shifts. The next thing we're going to look at is what happens with protons attached to sp2 hybridized carbons. What we're going to see is that they are unusually high. And the reason actually has to do with an effect known as magnetic anisotrophy. 
and that's because of the loosely held pi electrons on these sp2 carbons they move in a circular path in the presence of that magnetic field from the instrument and actually create a small magnetic field of their own and that effect really is additive and causes a larger effective magnetic field on the protons attached to the sp2 carbons so just for an example here here's an aromatic ring so a proton on an aromatic sp2 carbon at 7.2 parts per million just a regular alkene proton isn't quite as high but it's still at 5.4 parts per million so pretty far downfield and then just for comparison an alkyne proton is usually around 2.5 parts per million and an sp3 carbon hydrogen proton is around 0 0.9 parts per million so let's look at this magnetic anisotrophy effect in a little bit more detail so here this first example um, is just an aromatic ring we have our um, p orbitals where our pi electrons are at remember they're sort of moving in that circular path above and below the ring but what's happening here is in the presence of the magnetic field and we'll just call this B naught which is magnetic field from the instrument and what happens is these pi electrons being loosely held they sort of start moving in a circular path and what happens there is this creates a local magnetic field so then we have the magnetic field from the instrument plus the magnetic field that's being locally induced here and we'll call this magnetic field effective so the B effective and that's the magnetic field that is felt by this proton on the aromatic ring so a larger B effective is going to correspond to a higher chemical shift really the same thing is going on with um, the alkene protons so here we have our p orbitals of the alkene and again we have our magnetic field from the instrument these loosely held pi electrons are going to rotate around create their own magnetic field so these alkene protons are going to have a B effective that's larger than the B naught or the magnetic field of the instrument which is going to have um, an increase in the chemical shift now what we can say here is that the local magnetic field of the aromatic ring is actually higher compared to the local magnetic field from the alkene because this these alkene protons have a somewhat lower chemical shift than the aromatic now just to give you an idea of the kind of thing you really want to keep in mind is just some of the general regions in the proton NMR spectrum so rather than try to memorize individual values if you can just keep some of these general regions in mind this will really help you to figure out what some of these proton signals correspond to so in the 0 to 2 parts per million region that's where we see sort of our saturated hydrocarbon CH protons 
So these sp3, and that's where we see most of those. And there's really no electron withdrawing groups, no electronegative atoms. Now, if we move up here in sort of the one and a half to two and a half re region, call this sort of the allylic region, and this is where we have some electron withdrawing type group. Most commonly, it's a proton on a carbon attached to the carbonyl, but it could also be just an allylic proton next to an alkene. They're going to show up generally in that region. Then in the two to four and a half region is when we have a proton on a carbon that has a halogen attached. So the halogen or oxygen or nitrogen, some electronegative atom. And that's going to have a deshielding effect. Next we have our alkene protons. So that's usually in the four and a half to six and a half region. So alkene protons, we usually call those vinyl protons. And they're going to be in that region. Usually in six and a half to eight are the protons that are attached to an aromatic ring. Then the last two that we commonly see, right around usually nine and a half to eleven and a half is where you're going to see an aldehyde proton. And then usually eleven and a half to twelve and a half is where you'll see a carboxylic acid OH proton. So that's kind of some of your general regions. The last two that you might be wondering about, protons on a nitrogen or just an alcohol OH. So an amine or an alcohol. Well, these are variable and can really show up anywhere. So there's no real good way to predict amine and alcohol proton shifts.